Hello geometry students, my name is Jamie Amy and this video will start our discussion on chapter 5, Special Properties of Triangles, and starting with section 5.1, Perpendicular and Angle Bisectors. So we're not actually going to perform the constructions ourselves in this course, but it's still really valuable and interesting to see them. So this is uh, given a straight edge and a compass. Okay, those are the only two, two tools you have. And um, using those two tools alone, you can construct a perpendicular bisector. So that means you can take any segment, say that one, and you can bisect it, so cut it in half with a perpendicular line, perpendicular bisector, could be a ray or a segment as well. So you can see here that this is our given segment AB and you start by putting the compass on A and we only show the arch but it's neat to see if you drew the full circle. Then you take the compass and the trick is you don't change the, um, the width of the compass so that you have the same radius for your circles. So we're constructing circles, and since we know that the, um, the radius of the circles are, are congruent because we didn't change uh, the opening of the compass, then we know that the distance from A to the middle, uh, I'm sorry, from, whoop, erase, redraw. <laughs> we know that the distance from A to this intersection point, that's a radius of that circle, and that'll be equal to the distance of from B to that same point. It's a radius of this other circle. So we'd have to subscript those to make those different. Okay. And we know that this radius right here is the same measure and this radius right here has the same measure. So if we just connect the dots, we have cut that segment in two congruent pieces. One, two, with a perpendicular line. One, two, perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector theorem. So if we do have perpendicular lines, segments, rays, and we have that the measure from MA is equal to the measure uh, from M to B, so basically congruent parts, uh, pretty much this 90 degree marking and then this single tick mark. If that's the case, then, this is pretty neat, we can take uh, P, uh, wherever P is, we can connect from A to P and B to P, and we have constructed a isosceles triangle. So we've got two congruent sides. Uh, we know that the base is cut in, into two congruent parts. We've got 90 degree angles here. All kinds of symmetry and congruent parts going on with the perpendicular bisector theorem. The converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem is true as well. So if you start with an isosceles triangle, just like that, it turns out that if you take um, a bisector through point P and make it perpendicular, it'll be 90 degrees and it'll cut this side exactly in half. All right, let's use the perpendicular bisector theorem to find the length of segment AB. So this is what we're trying to find the length of, okay? All right, so if you need to redraw this or twist your paper so that it looks more like the, uh, the it's at the orientation of the theorem that we first learned it, it would look like that there, making B at the top, okay? That might help you um, to apply the theorem. So we have BA is equal to BC, and we know that, oh, double tick mark, we know that from the perpendicular bisector theorem. We can then set those algebraic expressions equal to each other because we know that the segments are congruent and have equal measure. We can then uh, use the subtraction property of equality and then the division property of equality to solve for our variable. Then we can use that, um, that known variable now and plug it back in to find that four times five will give us the length of AB, segment AB, the measure of segment AB. That's in linear units. Okay, let's look at another construction. This one, same thing, you have two tools. You have a straight edge and you have a compass. 
and you're given an angle, and what we're going to do to this angle is um, bisect it. Okay, so compass point would be here, and you open it to some amount like that. And I'll just draw the whole circle so you can see that this radius, same as that measure there. Okay. Then what you do is you take that compass. You got to keep the same radius though. Okay. Move the point to here and you draw this circle and the point to here of the compass and you draw this circle. <laughs> oh, it's really hard to sketch this. <laughs> that is awful. Compass point is here. So that's the center of this circle. <laughs> and the compass point is here. So that's the center of this circle. Wow. Maybe that's why we, well, <laughs> you can see the arch marks here. I always think of it like, okay, X marks the spot, like on a treasure map, the intersection of those two arches, because those are parts of a circle with the same radius. <laughs> Turns out that if you play connect the dots from your vertex A passing through that point, you will have cut your angle into two congruent parts, making AD an angle bisector. The angle bisector theorem says that if ray QS does in fact bisect that angle, so if you in fact have these single arch marks there, and if SP is perpendicular to PQ, that would give us this 90 degree marking, and if SR is perpendicular to QR, that would give us this 90 degree marking. So if we have all those markings, one, two, this, and this, then the theorem, the angle bisector theorem, allows us to add this marking here, one, two. Saying that the segment SP is equal, to, the measure of the segment SP is equal to the measure of segment SR. The converse of the angle bisector theorem is also true. So that is if we have the 90 degree marking and we have that these two segments have equal measure, then we can connect the dots, create QS, and QS will in fact be an angle bisector. So having these markings, one, two, three, four, will allow us to add this marking, one, two, okay? the converse of the angle bisector theorem. All right, let's use the angle bisector theorem to find the length of line segment R to M. R to M, I like to just get a visual on that. So we're trying to figure out what that is. So if we can write an equation with an X in it, we can find uh, that length there. Okay, so we know that NR bisects the angle LNQ right here, let me write some of the other. We know this, we know this is a bisector because of this single marking right here, okay? We know that this, these are perpendicular from the codes there. And that is knowing those markings, let me show you one more time, knowing this, 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 and this is what allows us to put this and this. Did you see that single tick mark I added? So the current markings there allow us to go one, two. So RM, the measure of it is equal to the measure of RP. And using substitution, we can say that 7x is equal to 2x plus 25. Subtraction property of equality, division property of equality, substitute the x equals 5 back in, and we find that segment RM is 35 linear units. And that will conclude our discussion on section 5.1. My name is Jamie Amy. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time for our discussion on section 5.2.